When we're talking about a new, complex flagship smartphone like the OnePlus 6, I always like to spend a little bit longer to understand the intricacies of the device, to discover some of the lesser known costs and benefits. I want to give you guys a conclusive answer as to whether or not this is a good phone to buy. And today, I've got an answer. So welcome to the real review. There's a reason OnePlus phones are so cheap. In fact, there are quite a few, and it's not necessarily because they use cheaper components. One of the primary things with OnePlus is they capitalize on what is known as the second mover advantage. The company waits until a feature has been released, refined and accepted by the people before using it in their own phones. And this is a double-edged blade. It not only saves the company a huge amount in terms of R&D costs, but it means that pretty much every aspect of the phones have been approved before they've even come to market. The OnePlus 6 is an embodiment of this strategy, and it's paid off big time, but there is a caveat. In terms of speed, it almost feels like you're cheating. Here in the UK, OnePlus 6 can be had for £469. You can step that up to 519 or 569 for the top spec model, which has a massive 256 gigs of storage. And even if you splurge for the top spec model, which to be honest, I'd say is slightly less good value than the base model, the bang for your buck is unprecedented. 569 compares to 799 for the P20 Pro, 869 for the S9 Plus, and 999 for the iPhone X. Now obviously, that's not the full story, but it does set the precedent. The OnePlus 6 flies, from the face unlocking, to the speed of uploading, to the new gesture-based control system. This is the fastest Android experience to date. Benchmarks and games only reinforce this notion. It's packing the latest Snapdragon 845 chip from Qualcomm, and there isn't much you can find on the Play Store that pushes it. The gestures, whilst I would say they're not quite as slick or quite as nicely animated as the ones on the iPhone X, they're responsive, and it was definitely something that I could find myself getting used to. The price has gone up from the 5T, which I've seen comments about. It has upset some people, but having better hardware, the latest chip, better camera optics, all of this does cost more. And the 6 is hands down better value for money than the 5T. You're getting so much more for that slight extra price. But then we've got the camera, and this is most likely where you're gonna feel the cost of OnePlus's second mover strategy. The very nature of waiting for features to become accepted before implementation means that you're never really pushing the boundaries out yourself. But does it actually matter? Yes and no. I have made a more in-depth camera comparison video if you do want more detail, but the bottom line is this. The OnePlus 6 has a robust dual camera setup with wildly impressive dynamic range, able to keep detail in all areas of a challenging scene. Its portrait mode is not quite at the top, but works well at creating DSLR-like depth of field, and it can shoot super high resolution 4K video at a smooth 60 frames per second. You've even got continuous super slow motion 480 frames per second video at 720p. You can shoot that for an entire minute, and it's even got a great selfie camera that balances detail and making you look good. But pretty much every smartphone the OnePlus 6 has pitched itself against, whether that's the top tier $1,000 flagships or even phones at the same price as the OnePlus 6, do have two times optical zoom, which is something the 6 has skipped this time round. So if you do want to zoom in, you'll suffer a noticeable quality loss. On top of this, companies like Huawei and Samsung have used their higher budgets to create a more experimental approach to the phone and camera. Variable aperture on the S9 allows it to reach a record-breaking wide aperture, which makes it very capable in low light. The P20 Pro offers three times zoom, as well as the ability to take awesome night mode shots and gigantic 40 megapixel photos. The OnePlus 6 shutter time isn't as fast, and it's not as good at retaining focus on small or moving objects. Nonetheless, it's a solid and reliable competitor, and in anything but the most challenging situations, produces photos that genuinely look as good as its twice the price rivals. The display is a similar story to the camera, in that whilst on paper it's far from cutting edge, in actuality, when you're seeing it, when you're using it, it performs better than it sounds. It's got a 1080p resolution, so it's less sharp than even a good portion of similarly priced phones. But I'd still say on balance, the decision makes sense, as it's saving on costs, improving on performance, 
and improving battery life. It's very bright, not quite as much as Samsung's S9 Plus, but as good as most $800 phones. And it achieves similarly vibrant colors and deep inky blacks. For those of you who are asking, the wallpapers I'm using are from the 3D Parallax wallpaper app. I'll leave links in the description below. Also at 84%, the phone has one of the highest screen to body ratios on a smartphone right now. The only somewhat polarizing caveat to this is you get that notch. Now, this video isn't gonna be an analysis of the notch. People seem to have divided themselves into little camps. Those that really hate the notch, those that just are completely indifferent, and those that actually kind of like it. But it does have the undeniable benefit of allowing the screen to stretch all the way to the top of the phone. By cramming sensors, an earpiece, and the front camera into this little cutout, you end up getting that little bit more display on either side. It's a sacrifice that I'm personally pretty okay with, and if you really don't like it, can be disabled. You probably know the deal when it comes to Oxygen OS on OnePlus smartphones. It's clean stock Android with a sprinkle of new options. And that's what you get here. Useful little software features like this pop-up to show where your alert slider is, and gaming mode that blocks incoming notifications and also boosts the games that you play. What's also pretty interesting is the OnePlus 6 is first in line for the Android P beta which probably means that when the final version comes out, after Google's own Pixel phones, this will probably get it soon after. Okay, but as well as the second mover advantage we talked about earlier, there is another reason that OnePlus can afford to make their phones so cheap. The phone is water resistant, but there is no IP certification as this is an expensive thing to apply for. The speaker situation also leaves something to be desired. It's kind of slightly better than last year's Galaxy S8, which compared to 2018 flagship phones, doesn't hold up too well. The phone also, whilst it does have a dual SIM card tray, has no room for micro SD cards. And this is a classic marketing trick. It's what Apple has been doing from the very beginning. It's a way to encourage people to upgrade, to entice them in with the entry price of 469, and hopefully end up selling the same customer the 569 variant. But I would say the lack of SD cards is becoming less of a problem as people's photos, people's music, people's TV, all seems to be moving to the cloud, storage is becoming less limiting. There's also no wireless charging, which has caused a bit of an upset because this typically goes hand in hand with phones that have a glass back. But OnePlus isn't apologizing. They say that their dash charging tech is so superior to wireless charging right now that it doesn't really make sense as an alternative. And for me, it's not an issue. I don't charge my phones wirelessly. I prefer the speed of wired charging. But at the same time, I do know people who religiously use wireless chargers. And for those people, that alone is a deal breaker. One thing I haven't mentioned yet is how much of a pleasant phone the OnePlus 6 is to hold. The gentle but noticeable curve is palm flattering and the finish has the firm feeling of glass without the general stickiness that results from it. But you do still have the fingerprints to worry about. You could look at this the other way. I've seen people complain that you're now also suffering the fragility of glass and not gaining the benefit of wireless charging. That usually comes with it. And in a way, they are right. OnePlus could have built a sturdier phone. And in fact, after just three weeks of very careful usage, I've already got some permanent marks on there, where the coating has been scratched off by a key or a zip, very day-to-day -day wear and tear. It is thinner than most six-inch display phones and weighty enough to feel premium without becoming uncomfortable. You've also got a headphone jack, likely something the company has been deliberating on. But again, this is another example of where being the second mover is a big advantage. They've allowed companies like Apple to perhaps prematurely ditch the 3.5 mm jack and let them face the consequences of those actions. There is a camera bump on the back, which lifts part of the phone up when it's lying flat, so there is a little bit of wobble. Below that, there's a fingerprint scanner, which is great in terms of speed, but is a little bit too flush with the body, so your finger is not naturally guided towards it so much. And I do prefer a circular shape. I did talk to the OnePlus design team about this, and they said they couldn't make it circular without making the back of the phone look like an exclamation mark. Which, you know, is a fair point, but I still think in this case I would have preferred the function over the form. The battery is pretty good though, same capacity as the 5T and even the 5 before it, but with the increasing screen size of these phones has also come improved efficiency. It doesn't quite reach the heights of the OnePlus 5 and in fact it's trading blows with the 5T for battery, which is to say it's not an A plus in this area, but more like a solid A. It's pretty good. All right, so where does this leave us? What is the conclusion to this? Do you buy the OnePlus 6 or do you not? The very nature of OnePlus smartphones means there's always a but, there's always a caveat, there's always some sort of missing feature or function compared to the more expensive phones that it's pitching itself against. 
What I would say though, is that with the one plus six, this is the smallest sacrifice we've ever had to make for such a big price saving. And the phone is even leading the pack in some ways, like its performance. If you're already set against the notch or you really need wireless charging, then this isn't the one for you. But for almost everyone else, the OnePlus 6 is fantastic value for money. Thanks a lot for watching guys, I really hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, I've got plenty more reviews like this on the channel, so be sure to smash that subscribe button down below. With that being said, my name is Aaron, and this is Mr. Who's the Boss, and I'll catch you guys next time.